a video? Now? Ah, oh, this is relentless. I'm in the middle of making a video about humidity and moisture absorption in general, but that's going to take a fair bit longer as I'm still writing it. And I'm still researching it actually, including waiting for some stuff to be delivered to me, including but not limited to a dehydrator and apparently now also a dry box, which sort of are the same thing, but also sort of not. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that I wanted to do something on humidity this week, but a bit less theory dense. I want to see if things that go damp when you leave them around in open air have any meaningful effect on the humidity content of a sealed bag of air. Specifically, I want to know if biscuits can keep your filament dry. Stick around, I guarantee you will be surprised by this one. Foods like biscuits are what they call hygroscopic. This means they can readily absorb water from the air, typically in normal room temperature condition. I tried researching why biscuits might be hygroscopic, but the internet is full of all manner of unconvincing arguments. I suspect it might be because they're baked to a very low moisture content, which is why they snap, and also why they last for months at room temperature as long as they stay dry. Of course, it could be that the internet is correct and that it's the sugar content, because sugar is also indeed hygroscopic in its crystalline form. I do remain unconvinced for reasons I'm not going to go into, but I suppose it doesn't really matter. The fact is, biscuits absorb moisture, and we, that's what I want to investigate. By the way, this is a biscuit. This is not a biscuit. In fact, quite a few foods are hygroscopic, likely because low moisture is an effective method of preservation, so substances that are dry, or that dry out other substances, are valued from a culinary perspective. Think about sugar as we mentioned, but also salt and baking soda, and many others. I'm going to mention rice briefly, just to remind anyone that the idea that rice is a desiccant is entirely incorrect. It's not a desiccant, it doesn't dry out phones. And even if it did, which it doesn't, then it wouldn't do as good a job as a heat source like a hairdryer or a radiator. But it isn't anyway, so it doesn't. Also, if you're ever in that position, the first thing to do is to remove the battery from your phone, if you can. Hmm. Back to the video at hand, today's experiment involves lots of these giant Ziploc bags, which are actually designed to be the right size for holding filament. Also, as many hygrometers as I can find lying around. Hygrometer, by the way, is just a posh word for humidity meter. I also have bags of silica gel, biscuits, salt, and finally air, I know, to use as a control sample, which is important because relative humidity is also dependent on temperature. That's what the relative bit means in relative humidity. Before I prepared the experiment, I needed to know that all the hygrometers are consistent with each other. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this experiment whether they are accurate, but they do need to be consistent, meaning they all need to agree with each other. The white one here has a dodgy display, but I can figure out what it's saying, and they all agree with each other near enough, so um, we're ready to go. Next, all bags are filled one by one with air and the medium we're testing. It was important to do this fairly quickly so that every bag got the same humidity and temperature of air to begin with. The first bag gets the silica gel, second one the biscuits, and finally the salt. This one was the trickiest because salt was in an open container, I didn't want to spill it everywhere inside the bag. It also became obvious at this point that if I'm making a habit of this, I'm going to need a larger filming table. Anyway, we put these aside now and we wait. Sometimes when doing these kind of experiments, you will get disappointing or unspectacular results. And while I set out on this particular journey expecting to get a reasonable outcome, but having to make a story out of it, what happened next was not even in the ballpark of what I expected. Watch this clip I made 20 minutes later in a total panic, and apologies for the onboard microphone sound quality, I didn't have any of my equipment set up, I was expecting to have to wait a lot longer. Um, anyway, let's see the clip. I, I put everything away because I thought I was going to have to wait about 24 hours to see the results, or at least a few hours. Um, it has literally been about 15 minutes. It's been about 15 minutes, and the silica gel, let me get that focused, I'm, I'm not going to tripod. It's down to 30%, it's lost 20%. The control, it's actually, it's gained a bit, but do you know what, I think, um, I'll explain why I think that's the case in a minute. Uh, the salt has also gained a bit, you can't see that, it's 58% uh, there. And the biscuits, yes, 39%. So we've got biscuits at 39%, which I'm actually quite surprised by, and we've got silica gel, at 30% after about 15-20 minutes.
As you gathered from the poor framing and camera work, I was totally unprepared to film that part. To address the point in the video where the humidity inside the bags is higher than the room's base humidity, actually it's quite obvious. The last thing I did to each bag was to reach in with my admittedly sweaty arm and place the hygrometer into the bag. Apparently, and unsurprisingly, this action added moisture to the bag. Now I'm going to just divert for a moment to show you a clip from earlier when I was testing the hygrometer's consistency. I breathed on the hygrometers and I was able to make this happen. They are incredibly sensitive. Watch this. Anyway, I was lucky that I did this sticking my arm in the bag apparently quite consistently across all the bags because it actually gave me an inadvertent but better starting point of 58% relative humidity at about 26 degrees Celsius. I guess you could call this a lucky error. That being said, let's move on to the final results. I waited another two hours before gathering final data for the video. The silica gel did the best job of all, which is hardly surprising to be honest. It managed to drag the humidity down to an impressive 18%. This shows that the power of a decent amount of fresh silica gel cannot easily be beaten. This stuff absolutely does work in a closed container. But the impressive runner-up was the biscuits, which managed to achieve 27% of humidity, a reminder down from 58% to 27%. Bear in mind this happened in just two hours. The salt managed to drop the humidity by two percentage points over the entire experiment, which honestly isn't even necessarily statistically significant. From my view, this just didn't work. I did a bit of post-experiment research, and I think I have the reason why. According to a quick internet search, salt doesn't work that well under 75% relative humidity. So that explains that, and it also explains why salt comes in non-airtight packaging. Humidity rarely gets that high for any length of time, certainly in this country, and I guess if it does, that's why we see occasionally salt will clump. Finally, the control sample of just air stayed at 58% throughout the experiment, which is what you want from a control, so that's great news. This spreadsheet here uh, shows you the values I measured at both the 20 minute and the 2 hour mark. I ended the experiment at two hours, but I also left it to carry on in the background while I was editing the footage. I noticed that the biscuit bag's relative humidity dropped further still. So while this experiment may have actually given us the answer to our question quite effectively, this matter is still far from over. In fact, I have more questions now than I started out with. For example, which biscuits are more effective? How many biscuits do you need? All British questions. Anyway, we need to wrap this one up with some kind of summary and leave those questions for a later experiment. So, I think there's really three conclusions we can make from these tests, and they are all quite surprising. Firstly, biscuits are really effective for drying out air. So at least within the scope of these tests, which was to create a dry environment to store already dry filament in, they are absolutely up to the task. Caveat in a moment though, so hold on for that. Secondly, all the effective methods, that is the ones that worked, they worked surprisingly quickly. This is within minutes. Thirdly, people are a huge source of excess moisture. Just being in the room with your filament, making moisture through breathing and existing, could be actually harming your filament. I mentioned the caveat, well, all these tests were done on an empty bag of air, which technically isn't empty because it's got air in it, I know, but there are two jobs that a desiccant can do in this context. Firstly, it can dry the air out so there's no moisture in the air itself. Secondly, it can continue to dry the air out as the filament reaches moisture equilibrium. Now, this is in the next video, but I will show you this image, and what happens here is that if you're trying to dry the filament rather than just stop it from absorbing moisture, you might bung it in with a desiccant in a bag, and the desiccant dries the air around the filament, and then the filament will exude moisture into the air to try to achieve equilibrium with the drier air. And then the desiccant can absorb that moisture from the air too. So what happens is the air is acting as a proxy between the filament and the silica gel. You can look up how much water silica gel can hold, and I think it's around 34% of its dry weight, or something like that. Each packet is not very heavy. Uh, I think they're, are they about 5 grams? So off the top of my head, um, a single packet cannot hold that much water. Something like half a teaspoon at a guess? The thing this experiment did not do is any measurement of how much a biscuit, or indeed a silica gel sachet, can absorb before it expires. There is scope for this in the future, and I guess now that I've opened this can of worms, I'm going to have to make sure that this happens, so look out for that in a future video. And I guess there is one more caveat to wrap things up, and that is that it's probably not a great idea to keep loose biscuits in a bag with filament. 
I think it's actually a very crummy idea. As fun as this was, I think it was more a demonstration rather than a real-world solution. Although that said, there are ways that you could keep the medium under control, including using a tub instead of bags. Indeed, if I had a dry box, a large dry box, I absolutely would consider a stack of constrained biscuits up one corner as a desiccant. Well, what do you think? Are you as surprised as I am by this result? Should I do more experiments around this in the future? Can you think of more foods or other items that might be more effective than biscuits? If you enjoyed this video, uh, please be sure to watch out for part 2 where I go a lot deeper into the theory behind it all. Otherwise, thank you for watching and see you next time! Uh, whose idea was this? Can I get a brush?